How is a linked list constructed? You have several nodes, correct? And each node has a value and the address of the next node. That is how you know where you have to go next, correct? So you will keep on traversing node by node by node. Sometimes what happens is in a linked list, one of the node will have an address that will point to one of the previous nodes in the list. So now think what will happen. As you will traverse this list, you will enter a loop and this will keep on happening infinite number of times, correct? That is a loop in a linked list and you can say that this is a cycle. So in this problem statement, you are given a linked list and you have to detect the cycle. So what can you do about it? Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain the problem statement and we'll look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we are going to see the brute force approach and see why that is not desirable. Going forward, I will show you a demo and then tell you how you can come up with an efficient approach. After that, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let us first make sure that we understand the problem statement correctly. And what could be a better way to understand the given sample test cases? Let us look at our test case number one. This is a sample of a very general linked list that you guys have must seen, right? So what happens when you try to traverse this list? You start from the head pointer, then go to the next pointer, then do a next again, then do a next again, then you do a next again and you reach null ultimately, right? And this is where you stop. So this list doesn't have any cycle. So you simply print out no on the screen. But what happens when a list has a cycle? To understand this, let us look at our test case number two. How do you start traversing this list? You start from the head pointer, right? So you traverse the head pointer, then you do a next to reach the next one. You do a next again, and then you do a next to reach the next pointer, a next again, a next again, right? Now look at the last node that we have reached. You don't see a null over here, right? But instead, what happens when you do a next again? So this last pointer will take you back to one of the internal nodes in a linked list, correct? Now, once you do a next, what will happen is you will reach one of the internal pointers, right? And you have landed at one of the nodes originally traversed. What happens when you do a next again? You reach the next node, a next again and you reach the next node. Once again, when you do a next, you will reach back the original node, right? So what is happening? You are stuck in a cycle, right? This loop will go on and on. And hence, this list has a cycle. So what you need to tell in this problem simply is, if you have a cycle, just answer yes. And if you don't have a cycle, just answer no. So if the problem statement is now clear to you, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us look at some innovative ways to solve this problem. Okay, so let us try to simplify and understand the problem once again. You have this sample link list in front of you that has a loop, right? What is the most basic solution that comes to your mind? One thing you can do is you can start to traverse it. So you get the value 4, then 8, then 15, then 16, then 23, then 42, and you see ultimately 16 again, right? So one solution that pops away straight in my mind is that, okay, I will try to traverse the list. And as soon as I see a duplicate value, this has a loop, right? So what happens in that case? You create a hash table and you will try to insert all of these values, right? So let me try to quickly create a hash table. Now, what you do is you start traversing this list and keep on adding elements in the hash table if they don't exist. If they exist, you already found a loop, correct? So you see four, it's not present, so you add it. Next, you see eight, it's not present, so you add it. Next is 15 not prevent, so you add it, then 16, then 23, and then 42. So all of these elements will get added to your hash table. Now, as soon as you do a next, you will reach the element 16, right? And then you look up your hash table again. You see that 16 is already prevent. And hence, this value is repeated. So it could be a loop, right? And you can say that yes, a loop exists. But this solution will fail if you have a list that has duplicates like this, you can see that in this list, the element four is repeated, right? So what will happen if you try to create a hash table once again? You see the value four, it's not prevent, so you add it. 
you see the value 8, it's not prevent for you add it. Next, you see the value 4 again. You see that the value is prevent in the hash table, right? So, does that mean this list has a loop? No, right? This list does not have a loop. So, this method will fail if your linked list has duplicates. A hash table is usually helpful if you can identify some unique value to work with. So, in this case, instead of the value of the nodes, what you can do is you can store the addresses of the nodes in your hash table. For example, an address looks like 0x005, then 0x015, something like this. It is random in the memory, but it is guaranteed that they all will be unique. So, instead of adding all of these values, what you can do is you can add all of these addresses to your hash table. So, then your hash table will look something like this. Correct? And the logic of determining a duplicate still applies, right? Because if you would check the address now, one of these addresses could be repeated. And that would mean that a cycle exists in a list. And this will also take care of the case when your list has duplicates. Because even though this value 4 is same, the addresses of this node and this node are very different. And hence, you will be able to detect clearly if there was a loop in the linked list or not. Now, this method works perfectly and it will give you a correct solution every time. The only caveat with this method is that you need an extra order of n space to store this hash table. And hence, this solution is not space efficient. You are taking some extra space, right? So, is there any better way that you can solve this problem without using any extra space? Let us try to explore around it. Okay, so just stick with me a little long. I will try to make this problem and this solution as interesting as possible. This is a racetrack and you see a tortoise and a rabbit running on it, right? And these are the starting positions of the rabbit and tortoise. Now, let us assume that this rabbit is running at a speed of 10, correct? And this tortoise is also running at a speed of 10. So, if these are the starting positions, would you ever think that they will catch up? No, right? Because in the time the rabbit moves over here, the tortoise will move this distance, correct? And when the rabbit moves over here, the tortoise will also move some distance. Since they both are moving at the same speed, they will never meet, right? If the initial distance was 5 kilometers between them, this distance will remain same throughout the track, right? So, let us try to change things a little bit. Instead of rabbit moving at the speed of 10, let us say the rabbit is moving at a speed of 20. That means the rabbit is moving at a double speed. So, what happens now? In some time, when the tortoise has moved a distance x, the rabbit is going at a double speed, right? So, the rabbit will have covered a distance 2x. In some time, when the tortoise has moved a distance x again, the rabbit will have covered even more distance, right? He will cover a distance of 2x. So, what does that tell you? The tortoise is moving at a slow speed and the rabbit is moving at a faster speed, right? So, what will happen is, sometime in the future, the tortoise will move over here and the rabbit will have already completed this much distance, right? If they go on moving, what will happen? Eventually, this rabbit and tortoise will meet at some position, right? So, just try to think this concept in mind. If you have a pointer that is moving at a slow speed, and if you have a pointer that is moving at a faster speed, if they are going in a loop, they will meet at some point, right? And this will tell you if a linked list has a loop or not. Because if there is no loop, both the pointers will reach null and they will end, right? But if there is a loop, the fast pointer will come in the loop and it will meet the slow pointer. So, can this work? This seems a lot of fun, right? Let us try to apply it to an actual problem and see what happens. Okay, so you see a linked list in front of you that has a loop, right? But let us see if we can find it with our algorithm. I have a hare over here and I have a tortoise, correct? And they will move at different speeds. The hare will move two pointers at a time, while the tortoise will only move one pointer at a time. So, after some time, the tortoise moves one position and this hare will move two positions, correct? Once again, what will happen is the hare will move two positions 
and this tortoise being slow will move only one position. Then once again this hare will have moved two positions and this tortoise will move one position. You can see that the hare is advancing two places at a time and the tortoise is only advancing one place at a time. Correct? Let us keep doing this. I have this hare, it moves two pointers. This slow turtle will only move one pointer. The hare once again moves two pointers and this tortoise will once again move only one pointer. Now look at it. This hare will again move two pointers and it will ultimately meet the turtle. So, what does this tell you? This means that this link list has a loop. That is why the hare was able to catch up with the tortoise, right? And as soon as they meet, you can say that there is a loop in the link list and you can return a yes. If you had a case when there was no loop, what would happen? You would have a null pointer, right? And the hare would have reached the null and he would have eventually stopped. As you might have guessed, this is also known as the hare and tortoise algorithm. Or in mathematical terms, it is also known as the floyd warshall algorithm. Now, let us quickly do a dry run of the code to see how it works. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, let us take up a sample link list that has a loop. So, what we do is, we pass in the head of this link list as an input parameter to the function. Next, what you do is, you start a slow pointer and a fast pointer. You remember, these are the hare and tortoise that we are talking about. So, the slow pointer is the tortoise and the fast pointer is the hare. Next, what you do is, you start a while loop. That means, you have to continue this loop until both of these pointers meet or one of them reaches null. If a null is reached, that simply means that the link list does not have a cycle. So, what do you do? You break out of this loop and you return a false. But, let us go into this loop now. As soon as we go into the loop, what do we do? We advance both the pointers. We advance the slow pointer only by one and we advance the fast pointer by two places. So, what will happen? This will move the fast pointer two places and the slow pointer only one place. And at every iteration, you check if the slow pointer equals to fast pointer. If they meet, we found a loop. This time this condition is false. So what will happen is this loop will run again. And now, once again, the fast pointer will move two places and the slow pointer will only move one place. So you see, this is the same kind of action that we just demonstrated, right? Eventually, when this loop will continue running, both the pointers will meet and we will return a true. A true means that there was a cycle in the linked list. Now, the time complexity of this solution is order of n, where n is the length of the linked list, because we are going through the entire list at least once, right? And the space complexity of this solution is order of 1. That is because we are not consuming any extra space. And hence, this is a very efficient solution. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that this is one of the very interview essential problem because this allows your interviewer to know that you not only understand the linked list, but you're also able to visualize it because that is how you can visualize a loop and detect it. Correct? Now think further. What could be the next question? The next question could be that, hey, identify the node where the cycle begins. And this problem has a lot of variations and you will find a lot of other problems as well that use the same algorithm. That is the floyd warshall algorithm. So if you have found any other such problems, do tell me in the comment section below and it will be helpful for anyone else also who is watching this video. Also, if you have followed any doubts, do mention me and I will be happy to help you out. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what other problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.